Hi everybody, this is Virginia Milner coming to you on behalf of the DeKalb County Public Library and we are doing another video tutorial today for jewelry making and this is one of my absolute fan favorites and one of my favorites because it's very colorful. I wanted to do something today that is traditional, non-traditionally traditional or classic, I guess I should say. I've seen a lot of versions of what's called the um, goddess bracelet. Um, I've seen a, somebody showed me a goddess necklace as well. Um, and it's, it's a really pretty piece. And what they usually do is use round beads in a couple of colors and it's very very classy looking and so what i wanted to do today is kind of turn that particular design on its ear and make it um, a, a little more festive so what i've done is take the classic um, goddess bracelet and turn it into what I call the glorious goddess bracelet. And the reason, the idea behind this, um, a friend of mine went um, hiking in, not Costa Rica, in um, Ecuador. Ecuador. So I wanted to do something that kind of echoed the beautiful colors that you see in the woven rugs that you can find in Central and South America. So what I came up with was these um, really pretty brightly painted uh, beads and I'm using that for this particular uh, necklace. I'm not showing it to you on purpose because I'm building up to it. So what we're going to do is take what's normally something that's made out of pearls and crystals and turn it and I'm going to use nice brightly painted um, uh, natural wood um, that's painted all kinds of bright colors and I'm not using it round. I'm not making them round. I'm using oblong or egg shaped um, beads. So this is what we're making today. Uh, again, I call it my glorious uh, goddess um, necklace. Uh, this one is about choker length, maybe a little tiny smidge uh, longer than that. And um, as you can see, the beads are very brightly colored. Um, it's just very, very pretty and very festive and very summery. So that's what we're going to be making today. The one that I'm going to show you today is going to be a little bit longer, about 18 inches. And um, we're going to get started on that. A couple of things that uh, we're going to need are our traditional pliers, our round nose and flat nose or square nose pliers, as well as cutters. Um, I'm using flush cutters today. It doesn't matter. You can use flush cutters or you can use uh, the more traditional cutters that they have the same purpose. It doesn't really matter one way or the other. Okay, and then you're also going to need a lot of brightly colored beads. The ones I have here are five by eight millimeter with eight millimeters be uh, being the length of them. You can get these on Etsy, probably get them on Amazon, and um, it's, it's really, they're really easy to come by that way. You're also going to need jump rings. Now for this particular project, I'm using closed or soldered jump rings. And the reason that I am is because we're going to be also using beading wire and it's very thin. If you use regular jump rings, rings which you can, that you kind of run the risk of the uh, jump ring sliding off of the, um, out of the wire. And so you can either double up on the uh, jump rings or used closed or soldered jump rings. That this is the same thing. Cl soldered means closed, soldered together. And um, uh, the other thing that you're going to need is crimp beads to finish your ends. Now I'm going to show you another way, another option to the either closed jump rings that sometimes can be a little hard to find. You can order them on Etsy and you can get them that, that way, but if you're trying to do it in a traditional store, it might not be as easy. Um, but I'm going to show you another option. I'm going to show you how to make um, jump rings, but not so much jump rings as split rings. I'm going to show you how to just wrap it one run and a half or two times around. Then you don't have to worry about doubling up on the beads or worry about anything happening where the, the, the beads will slip out of your wire because you will have 
um, that extra link uh, or extra circle of wire to um, secure it. Uh, the other thing is the size of your, I'm so sorry, I'm really hot. The size of your jump rings is important. If you have, like I have, a five millimeter width or circumference of bead, you want to make sure that your, your jump rings are either the same size as your wire or not more than one or two millimeters bigger because they are going to hang down over the side of your bead and you don't want them to accidentally slide all the way to the other side of your bead. So whatever the size of the circumference of your, the millimeters of your bead are, either that size or one or two millimeters bigger, but no more than that. I think that kind of takes care of that, all of the housekeeping. So what I'm gonna do now is show you how to make the split beads um, or the split rings that you can use in place of soldered jump rings. So I'm gonna turn this camera down and on. Let's see here. Okay, a little more light. There we go. Okay, so what we're going to do is take 20 gauge wire let me find the end of the wire. There we go. And you need about an inch and a half of wire to make your jump ring. So you can do this uh, one of a couple of ways. You can either leave it on the spool and just roll it directly from the spool, or you can cut one and a half inches of wire. Uh, one of the reasons, one of the, pro, uh, the pros for leaving it on the spool is that you don't waste any wire. You can roll your ring, cut it off exactly where you want to go and, and move on. If you cut off the inch and a half, you're probably going to lose about a quarter of an inch and it's almost impossible to cut the exact amount that you need because you need something to hold on to as you're rolling. So you're going to need that little tail on the end. Um, but it's kind of hard to do if you're in a classroom situation or you have more than one person that's um, using the wire to have it on the spool. When I'm doing a class, I can give them a long expanse of wire to work with each one of them. But um, I wanted to show you both ways. You can either cut it into the small pieces or you can just do it from the spool. So let's start with our inch and a half of wire. I'm gonna, oh, and the other thing is, if I wanna know how big I need this to be, again, I said this is five inches around. Five inches around, this is a five millimeter, or not inches, I'm sorry, five millimeters around, that would be a big B. So, and this is a five millimeter closed jump ring. So, that is perfect. It hangs down the side, which is exactly what it's supposed to do. If you can see that. If you made it um, one or two millimeters bigger, that would be fine as well, but no bigger than that. Now, how you ask, am I supposed to know, where to, how, how big to wrap this. Well, what you can do is take your five millimeter jump ring, slide it on your pliers and see where it lands. And that's about three eighths of an inch or so from the back of my pliers. You can mark that with chalk, mark it with a um, erasable marker or, or a washable marker, and that will tell you exactly where to land your wire that you want to wrap. So I need to put it right about there. So I'm going to slide it in between the jaws of my pliers. And if it's a little bigger, that's fine too. You just want to make them all about the same size and you don't want to make them too big. So there's my, as a matter of fact, I'm going to make it a little bigger just so you can see what it looks like if it is slightly larger. So this is probably more like six millimeter and let's do this. So I've got my wire clamped right there, um, just about eh, three eighths of an inch away from the back of my pliers. The front is clear. It doesn't have anything sticking out. The wire's not sticking out that side. And I'm gonna just start rotating. 
make a rotation, open the pliers, leave the wire in at the same spot, rotate again, and just keep rotating until I have a full circle. Now I have a full circle here. You can see this is the beginning of the wire. This is where I ended. Now I, when I continue to rotate, I want to make sure that the beginning of my wire is going out towards the end of the pliers. So I'm going to keep rotating until I'm squinting. Let me put my glasses on. I'm going to keep rotating until I have a full two rotations until the end of my wire meets up with the beginning of my wire, which is right there. And as you can see, I have at least a good quarter of an inch, maybe a little bit more wire at the end that I'm going to have to cut off. Make sure that's good. I'm going to cut that piece of wire off that I don't need. I like to hold on to the end and the ring so that the end doesn't end up someplace that I can't get hold of it again. Put that out of the way. And now I just have this little end, the, these little ends sticking up. I'm going to slide my pliers, slide the ring back on my pliers again, and I'm going to tamp down those little ends so that they're more rounded against my wire. And there we go. And there I have a split ring. Yeah, I think you can see that. I hope that's not too blurry. There we go. See a little end there. Let's push that down. And let's check it out. It's a little bit bigger than my closed ring. And let's see what the difference is on my bead. Probably not more than a millimeter. And there we go. It just still slides down just a little bit over the side, which is exactly what, it, what you wanted to do. That's part of the design. Okay. So that's how you make your split rings in case you want to make your own and you don't want to have to worry about ordering um, these if you can't find them in, in the store. But, um, and plus I like to give a little direction on how you can make your own things um, without having to buy them. That's just um, something I like to do. Just some little tips that I like to give. So now we are ready to start our piece. Now the first thing that you're going to need to do is cut some beading wire. So I'm going to need 18 inches because I want this to be an 18 inch necklace and because we're working with a double row, this is an actual double row, we are going to need to double that. So that's 36 inches and then you're going to add another four to six inches in order to have enough to finish your ends. You don't want to scrimp on that. So that's what we're going to do right now. I'm going to measure that out. Just have plenty here. Okay. Let's see here. There we go. Okay. And then an extra few inches. And there we go. Cut that off. Okay, and there's my wire. Okay, so now the first thing that I'm going to do is kind of fold this in half. We don't need to score it down here or, or press it together or anything. I just want to bring the ends of my, my beam wire together like that. They're both kind of even. Take one of my jump rings and slide it over one tail of the wire. Let it slide down until it's down in the middle. It's just hanging down in the middle of my wire. 
The next thing I'm going to do, <clears throat> excuse me, is grab a couple of crimp beads. Now, here's my um, kind of rule of thumb with crimp beads. I am a little bit anal about them because I have heard people say, I've had it said several times that um, the crimp beads break. I've actually had it happen in a classroom. Somebody um, did it and uh, their, their piece just fell apart. So I do not use a crimping tool. Crimp beads, when you are very, are made of very uh, thin metal, when you squish them the first time, you are damaging the, the metal. When you squish them the first time, you damage it. When you turn it to squish it the second time with the crimping tool, you're damaging it even more, even though you're strengthening it, uh, providing a nice little ball of strength. I don't really care for that. So what I do is just use my flat nose pliers and um, just um, flatten it one time. That's enough. I just make it a nice flat piece. Now, what you can do if you're selling your pieces and you really want something that looks more like a, a bead, then I have nothing against using a crimping tool. I've just had through trial and error several different crimping tools that were supposed to be top of the line. Um, same with crimp beads. I was obviously doing something wrong. So I just kind of gave up on that and just have gone with something that works perfectly for me. But if you really don't like the flat look after that you'll see after we do this, um, you can either use be a large bead at the back and slide it over that flat um, crimp to hide it, or you can use a crimp cover. Either one of those things is fine. Either one of those things works. But I am just sticking with my nice, plain old, ordinary flat pliers, and that's it. So now, after, there's my rant. So and now what I want to do is take my crimp bead and, and slide it over both ends of my wire. So let's do that. Get those in there. And then I want to test to make sure they're both in, in the crimp bead. And if I pull one and they both go, then I know they're, uh, that, that both wires are nice, firmly encased in the first crimp bead. And let's do the same thing with the second crimp bead. Slide that in there. Are they both there? Let's see. Yes, they're both in there. Very nice. So now I want to slide those down until they are kind of in line with my ring. So I want to slide those down until they are just close to the ring. I want to leave a nice little loop in between my jump ring and my crimp beads. You want to be able to, you want to have a little movement in your your jump ring, you don't want it butted right up against your crimp beads because both of them are metal and you don't want them to scratch each other. You don't, uh, you just want to make sure that this is nice and dangly. So you want to make sure that both of your crimp beads are nicely close together. And what you can do is either slide your, see this is, it doesn't want to cooperate. You can turn it down, slide your pliers all the way down to the as, as large a part as you need to get both of them together, or you can crimp both of them at the same time. Just be careful to make sure that they're both turn, you're crimping them both the same way. Now what I'm going to do is give it a nice light crimp, not a strong clamp, crimp, crimp the one, and then I'm going to slide the other one down near it and give the second one a nice light crimp. And now I'm going to check and make sure they're lined up properly and I can still adjust it. It's kind of, it's holding nicely, but it's not completely crimped. So I can still make adjustments if I need to. So now they look like they're both nicely together. I can take my pliers and finish it off. Give them a nice crimp. Check it out. And there we go. Nicely cramped. 
So now it's time to start on my pattern. So the first thing that we're going to do is start with some of our beads. And the way I did this one is a little different than I'm going to do the other one. Let me see if I can show you. Because what I did on the back of this one is just put a row of little teeny tiny um, um, wooden beads. I'm not going to do that on this one. We're just going to go all the way around with the oblong shaped beads. So the first thing I'm going to do is put two of my oblong beads on. Over both of the wires. Okay, one and two. And just to give you a little heads up, if you decide you want to do so anything with this, this painted wood, just know that it is painted wood. So it's usually drilled first and painted second. And sometimes the woods, the paint will drip down in the little holes and close them up. And all you need is to take a little, um, if you have a bead reamer, you can kind of use that to open it up again. Or you can use a head pin or an eye pin. Either of those things can usually um, poke that paint out of there. So I want to leave a little space between my um, crimp bead and my uh, wooden bead because, again, this is wood, this is metal, and sharp metal. You don't want it rubbing against the wood and kind of sawing into it like a razor. So um, once you, when you do this, you want to leave a little space in between, and you can make that adjustment later when we finish. But we start off with two wooden beads over both strands of wire, and then we go on to one bead over one strand, And then one jump ring over two strands. Make sure it's over both of them. Let that drop down. And then we go to another bead over the other strand of wire. So whatever, wherever the bead, the other bead is, you want to put the next bead on the other wire. So let's grab a bead, slide that over the opposite wire, and there's our first pattern. So you can see it's kind of, well, let's put another one on first. So you can see the zigzag pattern. And then we go back to the jump ring over both wires. And another bead over the opposite wire from where the green one is. So now you can see that there's a very obvious zigzag here. These are the two that went on over both of the wires. And then this is one wire, jump ring over both, other wire, jump ring over both, other wire. So you can see that there's a nice sharp zigzag pattern there. And that will be very evident if you accidentally put two beads on the same wire, you'll be able to tell that. Now the easiest way that I've found to know which, bead, which wire to put the next bead on is when I put my jump ring on both of the wires, when I let that drop over both wires, it's going to fall and hang over the side where there's no bead to support it. So it's hanging down this side. So the wire closest to that is going to be where my bead goes. And another way to tell is if I turn it off to the side, you can see that exposed wire there with the, with the jump ring hanging over the side, and it's a pretty easy way to tell where your bead is supposed to go because there's no bead on it. And if you need to just dig, dig a little, little bit, you'll be able to see. Okay, so a bead over one wire, jump ring over both wires,
and bead over the opposite wire, which is this one. Now there's a couple of easy ways to do this. You can lay this out this way and tape down the ends and then work it work your way up the um, the wire or you can just leave it unfettered and, and do it this way i like to do it this way because it's pretty easy it's not that long so you don't really have to worry about it but if you like to be able to just kind of string 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 without holding it um this this is a um, that's an easy way to do it now we can see where we have again a nice zigzag that's starting here zigzagging okay and then we put another jump ring over both over both wires and now i am going to deliberately put a bead on the wrong wire so you can see the difference in how it looks so now I'm going to have two beads on the same wire. And this is what I get. So you can see where that's not in the right spot. And you just kind of monitor yourself to see um, how it's looking, to see if it's zigzag. And I have had very creative people that have made that mistake and then chosen to make that part of the pattern. So they would have, um, zigzag 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 and two in the wrong place um quote 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 wrong place and then zigzag 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 and then repeat the uh supposed mistake and they made that their own pattern absolutely amazing awesome and brilliant best way i know of to not have to start over and it came out just gorgeous each time so, okay, and then we have another jump ring. Another bead over one wire. It's gonna go on this side this time. And jump ring. And I have a mantra, and here it is. Go ahead and get this on. When I want to just repeat to myself, I don't want to have to look and pay too much attention. I just have my own little mantra, which is get a green one in here. Here we go. Bead one. Jump ring two. Bead one, oh, there's one with the filled in holes. I'm gonna put that to the side and I can fix that later. Bead one, jump ring two. So it's basically bead one wire, jump ring two wires, bead one wire, jump ring two wires, sort of like, what is it? Uh, what is it in knitting? Knit one, purl two. So bead one, jump ring two. Bead one, jump ring two. I have my nice zigzag pattern coming along very nicely. And what I'm gonna do now is finish this up so that you don't have to watch me do this anymore. I think you've got it. Nice zigzag. And I'm going to finish this up and I'll be back to show you how to put the finishing touches on it at the other end. Get some more beads here. I'll be right back. For you, it'll only be a second. For me, it's going to be another few minutes. Okay, we're back. And here we are with our almost finished piece. Nicely zigzagged all the way around. Very pretty, nice and colorful, very, very lightweight. This is so lightweight because these 
each just weigh next to nothing. Now I'm going to show you how to finish off the ends and we're going to do kind of a repeat of what we did on this end. Whereas we're going to start by putting two crimp beads on over both wires. Make sure they're over both. See it over one and yes. And then put the second one over both wires. Okay, we got one and the other one needs to go in there. Oops, where are you? Might be easier to just leave it laying down here, anchor it with your finger and then slide one on and then follow it up with the second one. Whichever way works for you is fine. We got one in there. Let's see if we can slide the second one in there. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Slide that down. Grab a jump ring, slide it on the wires, both wires again. Make sure it's on both. And now this is where we want to make sure we leave space. I'm going to check up the other end, make some little adjustments here, make sure there's some space down there. And the way, uh, the easiest way to see it is just to move it back a little, forth, forth a little bit. It just needs to be about a um, millimeter, two millimeters of space just so that this is not rubbing and sawing into the wood that's next to it. And the same thing on this side, you wanna make sure that there's a little bit of space there. And now I need to loop these two wires back past the ring. You're gonna ignore that ring and slide these back through the crimp beads from the other end. And you want to slide both wires through both crimp beads. So I've got one in there. Let's get that one settled. It's in one, it's in two, yes. So that's anchored. And let me go ahead and slide the other one through there. Sometimes it's easier to do one at a time. Slide that in there. Make sure it's through both of them. Yes. Okay. I want to make sure that they're even, so I'm going to take my pliers. And make sure that both of these wires are even and so that your loops are even. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and I like to use my pliers or you can hold on to the ring and slide it down until you have a small loop. So I want to just a small loop between my crimp beads and my jump ring. And you can use your fingers. I'm trying to use my pliers so that you can see what I'm doing. So there I go, I've got a small loop forming in there. So there, I have a small loop in between my jump ring. There's my loop, there's my jump ring, and there's my crimp beads. Okay, and now check, make sure I have a little bit of space in between my beads and my crimp beads. There we go, that's got a little movement. Grab my pliers. Slide them down. Give them a small crimp. Check it out. Make sure they're both lined up nicely, they are. And then continue with the crimp. And I'm only crimping in one direction, I'm just flattening. There we go, got my loop. Got my distance between the 
crimp bead in the bead and the crimp bead in my jump ring. And now I do not like cutting off the wire just beyond the crimp bead because I, I think that's a recipe for disaster. If for some reason it slides out of the crimp bead, then you have nowhere to go. And your beads have nowhere to go but off. So what I like to do is take my wire and slide it down into, just tuck it down into a couple of my beads from the other side. So I'm gonna feed them down into the bead that's closest to the edge. There's one. Both of my wires are gone through there, have gone through there. Pull them nice and snug. And I think I'll go to the next one as well. I have plenty of wire left. That's why I said you should give yourself at least four to six additional inches of wire beyond what you want the length of your necklace to be so that you have something to maneuver with at the very end of your piece. So I'm going to slide these tails down through the next one and they want to go into the next one too. I might just let them. They're fighting to get into that purple bead. So let's start with these two first. Okay, there we go. Nicely through the green bead and I think I will go on through this purple bead just because I have enough to do it. And probably the easiest way to do it is to turn your bead so that the hole is facing out and away from the other beads that you can kind of see what's happening. So I'm feeding it in from one side. The one's going to go through and then I'll put the next one through afterwards. There's the one little tail poking out there. And let's slide this one in. There we go. Get in there. Hmm. He keeps poking his head back in the bead. Okay, there we go. Here's that tail. Very nice, and there's probably enough to go through another bead, but I'm going to quit right there. I have it down through three beads, which gives me a good inch or so of wire on the end. So if anything were to happen where that slides out or something and uh, you need to fix it, you have something to work with. If you cut it off up here, you just have to restring it. But if it comes out down here, I have some wire that I can still uh, go back and maybe just repair, the, repair it without starting over. So now that that's done, I'm going to take my clippers, cut the wire, tail, there we go, and voila, very nice. Last but not least, we are going to make an S-hook or a clasp. And the reason I really advocate for S-hooks is because you, especially in the classroom, I mean, you can use any kind of hook you want. It's entirely up to you. But when I'm working with people in a classroom, um, I have a lot of people that are both left-handed or that are either left-handed or right-handed. And this way, this kind of clasp is great because you don't have to be either or. You don't have to worry about flipping it one way or the other to put it on correctly so that you can fasten it with your left hand or fasten it with your right hand. You can put it on, you can just put it on very quickly any way you want and um, you can fasten it from either side. It's the most versatile, versatile hook um, that you can use. So that is why I love it so much. Okay, so I'm gonna take two inches of wire in order to make approximately seven eighths of an inch to an inch clasp. And it depends on how big you make your, how, make, how big you make your little loops because it's gonna come out like this. Okay, so I'm, I've got my two inches of wire. I'm going to take my round nose pliers and I'm gonna make a nice tiny little loop on the end of my wire. So I'm gonna feed my wire in to the very tip of my pliers. Make sure 
hardly anything, if nothing, if anything, is sticking out the back because I want this loop to, um, the end of the loop to lean against the long edge of my, my wire in a nice neat little circle. Okay, so there is my loop. Notice I did not go all the way to the back and I'll tell you why, because now we're gonna take the flat nose pliers and we're going to clamp that down just a little bit. I want it to be a little tiny nub of a bead. So now I've got a little a kind of football shaped little nub on there. And the reason I do that, make it a little smaller, is because I wanna make sure it will fit through my loop. You don't want it too big. So you don't want a great big loop on there. You just want a tiny little nub. And when you're doing that, you want to just tap this. Tap it and tap it until it kind of closes up a little bit, nice and easy. If you tap it too hard, it will mangle your wire. You don't want that. So just have some patience. Tap it, tap it, tap it until you have a nice little kind of a nubby little loop there. And now I'm gonna take my round nose pliers again and I'm gonna slide my loop onto the pliers. Now I call the bottom of the loop is the part where the round uh, end is, where the round part of the loop is hanging down. And the top of the loop is where the long straight expanse of the wire is. So I'm gonna slide this down my pliers with the loop hanging down one side. This is the bottom where the loop is. This is the top where the long expanse of wire is. And then I'm going to take the tail of my wire and take it over the top of the pliers and around until the wire touches the tip. Oh, I'm off camera till the wire touches the tip of my loop. And I'm gonna take it out. Now I have a little shepherd's head hook. Okay, I'm gonna do that again. I was a little off camera, so I want you to see what I was doing. So there's my shepherd's hook on one side. Then I'm gonna go to the other side, make another little loop. This loop is on the opposite side of the first one but it's, we're gonna make that small loop on the same side of the, as this large one. So we're gonna grab the edge of the, the wire again. The loop is going to go down here towards this one. It's gonna kind of um, say hi to that one. So I'm gonna make this little loop. With the tiny edge of my pliers wrapping the tiny edge of my wire right on the edge there. There we go. And again, it's not completely closed because I'm going to take my flat nose pliers and I want to squeeze it, tap, 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 until I have a little nub with just a little opening in there, just a teeny tiny one. Okay, then I'm going to take my pliers again, slide them in, and this time I did it on purpose. Last time I had the, um, the bottom facing down. Everybody gets con confused. They say, well, should I go over the top? Should I go over the bottom? The bottom of this is facing down, was facing down the first time, and we brought the wire over the top. Now I'm going to show you that if the, the bottom is facing up, then obviously the wire goes around the bottom. Because all we want to do is make sure that you're going around to touch the top of your um, loop. Okay, so I'm going to take the shipper tool that I have here. I'm going to bring it around the bottom of the pliers and let it touch the top of my wire. And you can see we have a nice little hook. 
And there you have it. Very easy, very simple, and very decorative. I love these, they're, they're just so pretty. And they go nicely with something like this is, that's also very, very feminine. Okay, so somebody asked me, do you hammer your clasp? Yes, I do. There's a couple of ways that you can strengthen your clasp. The work that you do with this soft wire is going to harden it anyway. It gets work hardened just by being used. Sort of like um, when you're kneading dough, the more you knead it and knead it and knead it and knead it, if you don't have a, enough water in it, it, it kind of dries out, right? Well, and gets hard and crumbly. So what we want to do is harden our wire and the way you can do that is to either hammer it or you can take some flat pliers like this and you can just kind of rough it up a little bit so I'm just gonna clamp 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 and the more I do that the more it's hardening because of the work I'm putting into it and th these are nice because they won't mar your wire they're completely flat and make sure if you do this, you're doing it with pliers that don't have ridges on them. You probably don't want to use ridges, uh, uh, jewelry pliers that have ridges anyway, because that will definitely damage your wire. Okay, so there's that. That's one way. Or you can take a mallet. I have my trusty, trusty little mallet that I got from the dollar store. It's just a rubber mallet. One dollar, yay. Or you can actually buy the real thing, uh, which is um, um, metal and you can have your little uh, stand that you put it on and you can hammer it. But I use this because it works just fine. Now when I start hammering, my um, computer automatically lows, lessens the sound. So I'm not gonna talk while I do this because you won't be able to hear me. Now notice that I did not raise the hammer and just, ooh, oops, ouch, and just go to town. I just do, need to do some light tapping all the way around in order to get it strengthened. And that, that really works wonders. Okay, so now what you will notice is that it's kind of opened up a little bit. So I just need to push this back and what I like to do is push the ring back just beyond the straight edge of my wire like that and then pull it back until it rests just against the wire that way it's nice and snug so i pushed it back the ring back over the wire and then snug it down against the wire Push it over and then bring it back. And there's my there's my hook. And now when I slide it on, it's not going to slide back off because it has it has a little springiness to it now. Hmm. Let me open it up just a little bit. Now I slide that on and it's a little open so I want to make sure I close it so that it won't come back out. Okay, and let's go to the other side. Let's open it just a tad. Step that on and then close it. There we go. Here we have it. So there's our piece. Nicely done. I hang it on here with this other one. So now you can see what it would look like if you had a, a double strand. And awesome. Let me turn that around. Let me show that to you the long ways. And there we go. 
there's your piece. That kind of gives you an idea of what it would look like if you wanted to really kind of go all out and make a double strand out of this. That would be awesome. So pretty. It's not necessary. You really don't have to because it's gorgeous on its own. This would brighten up any, any outfit any outfit at all. It really, really does. It's just so pretty. Anyway, so that is our tutorial for the day. I hope you liked it and I hope you will do it. Let me know what you think, what you thought. If it's something that you think you want to do for yourself, please do and post it. I'd like to see your finished product. Uh, you don't have to use all of these colors if you don't want to. You can use one or two colors, three colors. You can pattern it any way you want. I just did um, did different a different color for each strand. You don't have to do that, and uh, but it, it's really a lot of fun to do. It comes out nice and beautifully, and it's different than any other way I've seen it done or any other type of bead that I've seen used for this particular design. So I, I like it, obviously, and I hope you did too. So until next time, please stay safe and try to stay, stay cool if you're in a hot climate. I am, it's very, very warm, and um, I hope to see you next time, or at the very least, I hope you will see me next time. Thanks a lot, see you later, bye-bye.